It's been too long, I said. Old Finn only went in for a fever. He must be sick, Miss Addie said, concerned. Your grandpa can't abide a doctor, so for him to drive into St. John's. Nightingale set down her noodle necklace. I saw my own fear cross her silent face. I knew what she was thinking. She was thinking the same as me. What if something <coughs> bad had happened to Old Finn? Old Finn was our only known family, the last one left to love us. If we lost him, we'd end up all alone. At 83, Miss Addie was too old to raise three kids. Maybe we should wait, Nightingale said. No, I said. By now, Old Finn ought to be home. Somehow, facing down our troubles was always up to me. Baby was just six and Nightingale too timid. Old Finn always said it was the burden of the oldest to see the worst before everybody else, to be on the watch for trouble so the younger stars stayed safe. I put my finger in the dial and started with the three, three, six, seven. Everyone was watching. I couldn't hear a single breath. But pride, Nightingale started like she wanted me to stop. Her serious black eyes were full of worry. Perhaps I should be the one to speak, Miss Addie offered weakly. She stood up from her chair and shuffled toward the phone. Okay, I said. I knew St. John's would tell a grown-up more about a fever, even if Miss Addie wasn't half as self-reliant as the stars. <clears throat> Most days it was us who tended to Miss Addie. We all sat there still as stone while we watched Miss Addie listen. Oh dear, she finally said. And I heard in her hushed voice the news was bad. Baby snuggled close against my chest. Well, yes, I'm next of kin, Miss Addie Frank answered, flustered. Let me leave my number. Next of kin meant family, but Miss Addie wasn't that. I couldn't believe Miss Addie had just lied. All right, she said, thank you for your help. She hung the heavy phone back on its hook, took a few long breaths like she was weighing how much trouble she ought to tell three kids. I'm afraid, she said, a nervous warble rising in her voice. She fiddled with her wig of snowy ringlets. Old Finn has some kind of infection, some trouble with his brain. His brain, Nightingale gasped. Old Finn's brain was full of history and Latin, algebra and physics, geography and ancient Greece. He had a head packed full of knowledge, some he tried to teach to us, square root symphonies and sonnets. Old Finn can't lose his brain. Not lose, Miss Addie tried to say it cheerful, but still she worked her wrinkled hands into a knot. Hopefully his trouble will just pass. But when is he coming back to Eden, baby asked, before we go to sleep? Probably not, I said, because I knew the answer without Miss Addie even asking. I rubbed my hand over baby's soft brown bristles, bristles. Baby kept his hair shaved like old Finn wore matching Wrangler jeans, cowboy boots they both bought at Newport Saddle. He'd been a miniature old Finn ever since we moved to Eden. I imagine I'll have to keep you children here, Miss Addie said, like she wasn't really certain. Here? Baby's eyes grew huge. Miss Addie only had one narrow bed. There wasn't any place for us to sleep. The tiny trailer floor was covered with our crafts. But we're old Finn's next of kin, Nightingale said, matter of fact. She was tucked up in the rocker, her knees up to her neck, her rumpled nightgown draped over her thin legs her long black braids brushing her bare feet. Why didn't you tell the truth? Oh dear, Miss Abby shrugged ashamed. I didn't know what else to say.